And this is Cami Peterson, the Director of Clean Energy here at the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Welcome to everyone who could join us today. As Meg a minute ago, this is our Green Mobility Group Purchasing Program 201 Boot Camp Series webinar. And really wanted to fill you guys more in on our aftermarket conversion technology purchasing program as part of this larger program that we've been a part of with Fleets for the Future. You can see the logo there on the bottom right. Been really honored to be a part of that coalition of nationwide regional planning councils, the National Association of Regional Councils, and many other expert and industry partners. Um, so we're going to walk you through the agenda today and then get started on filling you in on where our program is at. So as you can see there, this is my quick welcome, and I'll give you just a really quick background too on MAPC. I'm sure nearly all of you tuning in are familiar with us, but always good to provide a little context. Then I'll turn it over to Meg, who will go through an update on our program and walk you guys through a little bit more about what we've done so far, where we're at currently, and what our next steps are. And um, the big the big presentations of the day from three vendors who have been good enough to join us, Mag Motor Technologies, Lightning Systems, and Excel Hybrid. So thank you to all three of them for joining us today. They'll take you through their presentations, and then there'll be an opportunity for, for question and answer with the vendors, or if you have any questions for us and you will be happy to answer them at that time, too. And you can just write that into the chat section um, of, of the website. So just a little background on MAPC. Um, as most of you know, we are a regional planning agency for the greater Boston region. It's 101 cities and towns that we serve. We have over 80 employees. We're actually close to 90 right now the majority of which are planning staff working with cities and towns on a myriad of issues from land use to economic development, housing, public health, municipal collaboration, and regional procurements that we run, homeland security. Um, we have a government affairs and data services department students, obviously clean energy as well, environment, transportation, so many, many different types of services that we provide to, to, our, to our region and the subregions that make up those 101. With our wide range of planning expertise, we work as well on, on policy and, and program development. We really like to take those plans off the shelves and implement projects to the best of our ability. Um, one thing I did want to highlight as part of this is our group purchasing work. So in addition to technical assistance and education and awareness activities and, and many others, we also do collective group purchasing. And this has many different forms. Our municipal collaboration department and Mark Fire, director of municipal collaboration, is also here on the webinar and be available for answering questions later. Um, we do a lot of purchasing on behalf of cities and towns in our region and beyond on things like fire trucks and police cars and um, bike racks and parking meters and, and many other um, products and services. From our energy team, we also have done a lot of energy services that we've been able to procure on behalf of a number of cities and towns, things like solar um, developers and, and ESCO companies to do energy efficiency upgrades to municipal facilities, um, LED streetlights. We're working on a statewide program with that right now. Um, and now this vehicle program is our, our latest addition as well. Um, so we look forward to really working with many more of you on this, and Meg will tell you how you can tap into it. You know, we really look on bridging the benefits that we found always through group purchasing, economies of scale, being able to leverage our expertise and capacity to do a lot of the administrative um, and strategic work that's needed to put together a really successful purchase um, and, you know, Giving, taking some off of, of, of your plates, those of you on municipal staff that, that look to purchase different products and services. So with further ado, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Meg Aki, who will take you through our, our latest collective purchasing initiative here with our Green Mobility Group Purchasing Program. Great, thank you, Amy. Um, so as many of you already know, um, we launched the Green Mobility Group Purchasing Program earlier this year in February. Um, the program aims to support municipalities and other public entities in, the in transitioning their fleets to cleaner fuels. Um, so as Tammy mentioned, you know, the overall goal is to reduce the amount of time it takes for uh, you to purchase these clean vehicle technologies and get the best price from vendors on the statewide contract buying in bulk. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about where we started with this project for those of you who aren't familiar with, with the project. Uh, talk a little bit about the upcoming rounds of the group purchasing program and what that process is going to look like. Uh, this program is a part of uh, our nationwide Fleets for the Future initiative. 
Um, this is in partnership with the National Association of Regional Councils, um, which is funded by the uh, U.S. Department of Energy. Uh, so MEPC, along with four other regional planning agencies, um, are developing these aggregate purchasing programs or cooperative procurements to advance the adoption of alternative fuels across the country. Um, so we're also supported in that effort by a multitude of technical advisors you'll see um, up on the slide, um, and also Clean Cities coordinators who have been really a great resource for us and also for our community. So as I mentioned, the National Association of Regional Councils has been a key partner um, as we've developed the group purchasing program. Um, it's, this work has also been uh, deeply informed by uh, the input of our Green Mobility uh, Purchase Advisory Committee, uh, which we convened back in December. Uh, we've had a couple of meetings since then. Um, and then after that, uh, the Department of Energy Resources and the Operational Services Division um, here in Massachusetts has been uh, have been great partners on this work. Um, last spring, we worked with them to develop this statewide contract, the EH102, uh, for advanced vehicle technology, uh, which you'll hear about more shortly, um, and is the foundation for our group purchasing program. So, before we get into the details of what the program is up to look like and what the process is going to be. I uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of how we got here. Um, so we started last fall with a survey of uh, communities uh, and also the advisory committee to figure out where the gaps were for municipalities uh, trying to bring alternative fuels into their fleets. Um, and what we could tell from this uh, immediately is that municipalities really needed help figuring out what those options looked like for um, larger vehicles in their fleet, so medium and heavy duty uh, work vehicles. Um, and so that, uh, we also cross-referenced this um, qualitative input that we got from folks with the green communities vehicle inventories, which encompassed about 10,000 vehicles across the state. Um, that data really showed us that there were opportunities in this area to bring together bulk um, and, and access those discounts that were in the, the statewide contract. Um, and then uh, even further looking at the technology that's available on EH-102, there's a lot of overlap um, in vehicle types that we saw um, as common, such as uh, buses, vans, work trucks, and pickup trucks that you see on this slide. Um, so there were a lot of opportunities there that were readily available through the contract to convert those um, vehicles to alternative fuels. Um, so with this in mind, um, earlier this spring, we launched the Green Mobility Group Purchasing Program. Um, so both letters of interest uh, and vehicle interest lists from communities uh, to nail down what specifically, uh, what makes and models communities would be interested in converting in the near term. Um, so we asked communities to let us know what they wanted to convert and when they would like to convert it. So we could really base our program on what those interest areas were and what timing uh, made sense for when communities get grant funding or other things in terms of the municipal budgeting cycles. Um, as it turned out, there was a good amount of interest from folks in pursuing hybrid electric conversions for vans, shuttles, trash trucks, and school buses. Um, so for the front of the program, which is what's on this slide here, um, is it's likely going to take place um, pretty soon, it's end of July, early uh, end of June, early July. Um, so that's coming up very shortly. Um, as you can see, it's focused on several models of cargo vans, passenger vans, uh, and shuttle buses. I want to note that so while we're looking to bring in additional bulk um, for these particular makes and models that we've already received interest in. Um, there are other makes and models of vans and shuttle buses that can be converted to hybrid electric um, using hybrid electric conversion technology, and um, we'd be very open to including those in this first round. Um, so if it's something that piques your interest um, on this webinar, please let us know as soon as possible, and we can expand the program to address your particular needs. To round one, round two um, is very open to include additional makes and models for trash trucks and school buses. Um, and either MAPC or the vendors that are on this call are happy to help you identify opportunities if you <coughs> don't see one of these makes or models that are up on the slide right now that match the needs in your community. Um, and we anticipate that round two of this group purchasing program uh, will take place either late this year in fall 2017 or beginning of winter 2018. Um, so, but right now the timeline is very fluid for that second round um, until we 
bring more entities into that round and get a sense of what their timing um, needs are uh, for that group purchase. Um, so to give an overview of what we anticipate the process and timeline looking like for the group purchasing program, uh, in May, uh, we began to collect some more detailed vehicle specifications from the communities who had already sent us letters of interest in those initial vehicle interest lists to nail down um, exactly what the characteristics of the vehicles that we would be going to the vendors with um, in, over, over the summer. Uh, so with that information that we received from both the municipalities and the uh, state agencies, uh, we realized that it would be really beneficial to partner with both uh, Operational Services Division and uh, DOER to figure out an approach to the group purchasing model that would allow municipalities and the state entities and other public entities to purchase together and achieve larger amounts of bulk. Um, and so in the near term, um, with this sort of shift in mind, uh, we anticipate having the state issue, the statement of work for these hybrid conversions of the vans and shuttle buses for the round one. Um, and while the details of what that will look like are to be determined uh, in the next week, um, the intent is to negotiate bulk discounts that will be held for discrete time periods, um, which would incentivize purchase orders to happen sooner rather than later but also give us some flexibility in terms of bringing on additional communities while the vendors hold that pricing, the discounted pricing for that window of time. Um, so we'd like to hear from you soon if you want to participate, but there will be opportunities in the future for you to join um, and access these discounted prices as well. Uh, then, as I mentioned, uh, round two, um, we anticipate um, ramping up in the fall um, with for, for recruitment of communities who are interested in pursuing those technologies uh, over the summer. Um, why should a municipality or other public entity join MAPC's group purchase? What's the big deal here? Um, so as I mentioned, um, a huge part of this is getting to access those bulk discounts that are on DEH 102 um, and potentially getting a greater discount if we're able to negotiate that. Um, and as MAPC will be working with the state um, to join municipal purchases with state free purchases, um, this is a group purchasing model that will potentially allow smaller cities and towns or those that just want to try out the technology on one of their vehicles um, to do that and still get advantageous pricing um, and access those bulk discounts. Um, another uh, benefit to doing group purchasing is that um, it will save you some time and hopefully save you some money. Um, MAPC and the state will coordinate all the price negotiations with the vendor uh, and handle that paperwork so it's not something that uh, the municipality needs to, needs to deal with. Um, and then, as I mentioned, there's the, the discounts that you can take advantage of. Uh, and the vendors will talk a little bit more about on the operations side, once you implement the technology, what kind of savings you might see there as well. Um, finally, um, it's an opportunity for your city or town to join the state in leading by example in this area. Um, by doing this, you can show your peers that converting larger vehicles in your fleet to greener options is possible and beneficial. Um, we really see this as the first round of something that we hope to continue um, and spread to more communities in our region and across the state. Um, so that's one other point about uh, the program that's really important is that because we're using the statewide contract that we've set up with OSD and DWR, um, it's open to also public entities across Massachusetts, but also nationwide. Um, so if someone in another state uh, hears about our program and wants to do a hybrid conversion of their then they can join our group purchase too because the contract enables um, that kind of purchasing. Um, the sourcing team purposely set up the contract that way uh, to really enable the adoption of this innovative uh, technology for public entities across the U.S. Um, finally, how can a community participate in this program? Um, in the case of both rounds one and two, um, we really need the vehicle specifications um, to include in the statement of work for each vehicle that you'd like to convert. Um, as follow-up to this webinar, I'll include uh, a sample Excel spreadsheet for communities to fill out if you'd like to join the group purchase. Um, as I mentioned, for round one, as soon as you can get that information to us, the better if you're interested in joining. For round two, there's a little bit more uh, of a time frame for getting that information to us if you have further questions about, uh, about 
things. So uh, now onto the main event. Um, so as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, MAPC collaborated with OSD and DOER to develop this statewide contract, um, and it covers three service categories, uh, which include electric vehicle charging stations, Adduction technology and aftermarket conversion technology. Uh, today, we're going to hear from the vendors in category three, uh, which, as I mentioned, is the focus of our upcoming group purchase. So, you learn all about these technologies um, and how you could apply them in your fleet. Um, so, I'm going to hear from Carlene Harrington uh, from Mag Motor Technologies, uh, Tim Reeser from Lightning Systems, and David Beralt from XL Hybrids. Um, and so during this portion, if questions come up that are uh, specific for each vendor, feel free to type them into the Q&A chat box. Uh, we'll do our best to get to all the questions um, that you might have for the vendors in the Q&A at the end. Um, so now, uh, without further ado, I'll pass the controls over to Carleen so she can things off. Hey, thanks, Meg. And good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for the opportunity provided to MagMotor to give you an overview of information on repowering an existing trash truck using battery electric power. So did you hear me or was I not taking control, Meg? Yeah, I heard you. Um, you should have control now. Shows the municipal application of the uh, the trash truck repowering an existing diesel, and so you can read the uh, this. One. So operating within a relatively short range uh, garbage garbage or refuge, as they call it, trucks are ideal for the electric power technology. Because garbage trucks get as little as three miles per gallon, making them the prime focus in cities and towns. Uh, to trim costs and limit the uh, greenhouse gas pollution. So new track trucks costing uh, several hundreds of thousands of dollars, revitalizing an existing vehicle is not only cost effective, but it also adds to the life expectancy of a, of a truck approximately eight years. And in a few years, the costs can be recovered. For that retro. It's a continuous stop and go travel routes, quiet and clean battery electric vehicles don't waste energy when they're idling and they recover the energy during the braking portion of the stop and go travel. So, regenerative, so motor acts as a generator, which means that the motor reverses direction when braking. It recharges the onboard batteries with electrical energy that would normally be lost as heat to the traditional mechanical friction rate. And the energy becomes stored electricity and can later be used to run the motor and accelerate and slow the vehicle. The system runs the life cycle of heavy duty truck brakes from a few months up to three years, which is substantial. This is most useful in stop and go conditions. So it's overnight charging with minimal facility costs, and you can get approximately 65 miles a normal eight-hour day. Yeah. Maintenance savings for battery electric vehicles from the deal is approximately $3,000 because electricity is less expensive than diesel. And because of the regenerative braking system, system, the vehicle saves the wear and tear on the rotors and the pads, and that's about an average savings of $500 to $2,000, depending on your vehicle and the age of your vehicle. And of course, with electric, there are no oil changes. So uh, it's a great alternative to hybrids. Through acceleration and braking, you can get more life out of the batteries. And then you cruise without acceleration allows for the regenerative braking to, uh, to occur. So 
savings in fuel is about $1,000 and about $10,000 in maintenance. And uh, um, rebates all that diesel. So uh, it's, a, it's a big savings. 52, 52 gallons annually is a huge savings. Diesel is about two and a half up to three dollars uh, a gallon. So a free fleets, it's a, a larger savings. So we use battery electric, but um, natural gas is the least expensive. But a lot of the uh, cities and towns don't have access to natural gas. So we chose going with battery electric and zero emissions on battery electric. This is series hybrid street sweeper um, that we we started in 2010 in New York as a a prototype uh, for the rest of um, the states to follow. California just picked this up and it's going to uh, do more types in California because this is very successful in New York. So hybrid sweet streepers, sweet streep, oh, that's a tongue twister. It was a 50% fuel savings because that only was a diesel and 58% reduction in greenhouse gas and gases and emissions and that, that's huge. And it was such, like, like I said, it, it was such success in May, this past May, they decided to introduce that into uh, California. And this one that you see right here is monitored through a uh, data collection and uh, a reporting system that have, and it's wireless, uh, it's tele te wireless. So we can see at all times the performance of the vehicle, hearing issues, uh, so we can be right there to, to uh, you know. So projects that, that we've been working on in the uh, hybrid, so like I mentioned that in May, uh, California Department of Transportation, Caltran, uh, purchase orders to produce fuel cell electric uh, streamers, and we'll be doing the electric powertrain and uh, the fuel cell. Um, and so these zero emission street sweepers will be powered by advanced freeze capable, high efficiency fuel cells with an 80 kilowatt fuel cell engine and a 200 kilowatt direct electric drive power, power chain system. So uh, we have accumulated more than 1 million kilometers of operation with electric and hybrid traction drive systems for both medium heavy duty. Uh, municipal vehicles, we do fuel cell transit, buses throughout the world. So we have this street sweep I mentioned in New York. And we're successful. We have fuel cell buses, uh, California for Sunline Transit. We have powered uh, Class 8 drayage trucks uh, in operation in the Port of Los Angeles and the Port of Houston. And we also have a range of fuel cell vehicles uh, for Hickelman Air Force Base in Hawaii. We show the buses, step vans, military vehicles, and port trucks. And all I have. Thank you very much. Carlene, uh, so Tim, you're up next. And I'll pass control to you now. Thank you. Um, we're uh, taking control. Thank you for everyone that uh, we have on the phone. Looks like there are 12 attendees, so appreciate everybody making the time today. Um, as Megan said, I am uh, Chief Executive Officer and one of the founders of Lightning Hybrids. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, we uh, started the business, which I'll get to about eight years ago, uh, but under the premise that we wanted to solve a, uh, a very specific problem, and that was, I don't know, we have some overlay on this slide, but anyway, uh, 45 million uh, trucks and buses in the world, but when you look at that, uh, which is small relative to the number of cars, but 30% of all harmful emissions and 40% of all fuel used in our environments is coming from these trucks and buses. So even when we saw from Megan's slides that an awful lot of the, the uh, government fleets certainly are cars and pickup trucks, the opportunity to make a real impact from an uh, environmental standpoint, from a 
human health standpoint around lungs, et cetera, is certainly there in the trucks and buses. So uh, I hope from the group on the, on the line you'll see this opportunity, and we see it as an opportunity to help the kids and grandkids as well. Um, a little bit on Lightning Systems. Uh, many of you may have known us as Lightning Hybrids previously. We recently changed our name to uh, embody the fact that we now have uh, multiple products, not just one hybrid product. Um, we have uh, investors like uh, BP Ventures, Castrol Ventures, Coors Tech, um, so well-funded, uh, well-capitalized organization. Uh, about 50 people today who all we do is work on efficiency and emission solutions for fleets. Uh, we are totally focused on commercial uh, fleet vehicles. Um, and today, uh, about 25 well-known fleet customers. UPS is running a, a large number of our systems. Uh, Keesling Transit there in Boston, uh, I'm sure some of you see their trucks running around, uh, their buses. They've got uh, nearly 70 of our uh, hybrid systems running on their buses. Um, and then we've got locations in uh, Europe as well where we've got DHL, UPS, and Ariva bus running our systems. And then some other names you'll recognize, some of these are running in Chicago with Hyatt, uh, National Express, and MV Transit. Um, so we've, we've been in business uh, since 2008, uh, and today really ramping up the business uh, with both uh, help from our investment partners and from our customer base. So our, our company mission is to provide, be the global leader in efficiency and emissions improvement solutions. So again, uh, very specific to what uh, Megan and, and the team and, and what they're looking to provide you. Um, we're in that space and uh, we are specialized specifically in this space for medium and heavy duty fleets. Um, we do retrofit, upfit, and OEM. Um, so even if you've got vehicles on the road, we can do it. If you've got vehicles that you run through upfitters, uh, we have partnerships with most of the major truck and bus upfitters in the United States uh, and in Europe. Um, and then, of course, OEM, we've got a variety of OEM partnerships, including Ford, uh, where we are a, a certified quality vehicle manufacturer, uh, one of three uh, today that are certified quality vehicle manufacturers in the, the efficiency space that we're in today. Um, we've historically been known for our hybrid product, and our, like I said, our name originally with Lightning Hybrids was there. Um, that product is still a flagship product, in fact, is expanding significantly both through acquisition and through a new product. So that Lightning Hybrid product we'll talk about in a bit supports uh, virtually every platform in the world today, uh, big and small, um, in a very effective way. Uh, but we've also added a few more products that are in the process of adding a few more products, so we'll talk a little bit today because I think it's relevant around our analytics platform. Uh, as, and we'll introduce, uh, spend just a short minute of time on our other products, our control start and electric products that we're uh, in development right now and getting ready to release. We seem to have lost control of the slides, Megan. Some slides. Yeah. Looks like we skipped some slides, so we'll get control to go back up. Okay. Right. Okay. Lag here. We'll give it just a second. I'll take it back and give it back to you. See if that helps. Okay. okay, yeah, we need to go back quite a few slides. Yep. So that seemed to forward, sorry. Okay, uh, so next slide. Um, so I'm going to talk for a little bit about Lightning Analytics. So, Megan, if you can go to the next slide here, I think it will take us there. Um, and the premise here that I think we talk about with fleets, uh, we offer now today both a standalone analytics product as well as an integrated product. When we talk about analytics, it is both telematics and analytics. So we are uh, connected uh, to the vehicle full time with uh, um, LTE connections to the vehicle as well as Wi-Fi to the vehicle. The vehicle also has onboard storage. So one of the unique things we're doing in this space is grabbing data at 20 hertz, so meaning 20 times a second we're grabbing the CAN bus data off these vehicles 
And then in the case when it's running one of our hybrid systems or our other products, uh, we're also grabbing data from those products as well. So we're integrated in drivetrain with those products. So the, the benefit to you as fleet managers is we provide a scoring system for your drivers. We also provide a scoring system for your vehicles and routes. So it's easy for you to turn the information we're giving you into something actionable. The feedback we heard from fleets is, and the fleets that already have telematics is, is they get a bunch of data and it doesn't change the way they do business, so why bother? And so we've come out and said we're going to provide real analytics behind these telematics and help fleets determine, um, for example, let's take your, we'll score all the drivers and you'll know who your bottom 20% of the drivers are and we'll also score them with uh, specific things like they need uh, training around brake use, they need training around over acceleration, they need training around speed or, so make it easy for your fleets to train, make it easy for your fleets to identify where the opportunities are to improve efficiency. Um, we know that, that uh, just driver efficiency alone, whether you're talking about an electric vehicle or a hybrid vehicle or a stock vehicle or a natural gas vehicle, there's a 20% difference between the good drivers and the bad drivers. And that's very material for many of these fleets when you look at your operating costs on fuel and brakes. Um, so a real opportunity to change that with something effective. And uh, so that's really what we're doing in the analytics. The other side of this analytics is it's extremely cost effective relative to what they've cost in the past. So we encourage you to, to talk to your teams and to talk to Megan about the costs. Um, we will negotiate very aggressively for Megan, give, give your teams really good uh, pricing on this that I think will surprise everybody in the past. It was too expensive, not just from us, but from everybody else. Now today you'll see a very compelling price point, both standalone and with our hybrid system, that has a great ROI in terms of getting everybody uh, better drivers, better safety, uh, better efficiency from your vehicles. You'll be able to identify very quickly which vehicles need maintenance and support. Um, we're excited about the product, ready, ready to, uh, we've got 200 of these on the road today grabbing data um, from commercial fleets, um, really uh, solid information from that, and so we think your fleets will all be excited to see it as well. Next slide. So uh, I want to flow right into talking about uh, lightning at, uh, hybrids. So we talked about analytics. We'll talk about hybrids next, next slide. Um, we'll go ahead and run an animation here to give you an idea of what this is. So a bit through this while it's running. Uh, basically, the heart of the system is valves and, man and pumps. This will show ultimately how this works and how we're doing the hybrid. Um, this we have power power tree unit. And you can see the tanks there. A high pressure accumulator and a low pressure accumulator are the energy storage. And the, uh, the control system that also in this case includes uh, all of our telematics and analytics with it as well. Uh, you can see how easy it is. We, we have this system today on over 25 OEM platforms, um, and within those platforms, virtually every size and, and vehicle all the way from large refuse trucks all the way down to, to Ford Transit vans and, and Mercedes Sprinters. Um, it is fully integrated into the vehicle. It can be installed in about four hours, and we've got upfit partners both in uh, across the United States that do the install very quickly and efficiently. Um, so we're, we're very proud of, of both how quick it is and how easy it is. You see a bit in the animation how it works. Instead of taking energy, converting it to chemistry by batteries, and then having to convert it back to mechanical, it always stays as mechanical energy, and effectively, when you brake, we uh, the pumps uh, pump fluid from a reservoir into a high pressure tank, and when you accelerate, it uh, releases it from the high pressure tank and uh, expels it back into the low pressure tank. Uh, very efficient way to do power density, about a 70% in and out efficient compared to electrics that are about 30%. Because batteries are limited on how fast you can charge them on very large vehicles. We aren't limited uh, by that fast charge. So extremely uh, effective. Uh, uh, opportunity in terms of how we're recovering energy and putting it back on the, on the line, but also very effective from a weight standpoint. Obviously, weight matters for commercial vehicles. Um, you generally buy those vehicles like a refuse truck to uh, so much uh, uh, refuse around. Um, if we put in uh, too much weight from a hybrid system or battery system, you aren't going to be able to, to uh, put as much uh, weight on the truck. Uh, we have the by far the lowest weight penalty of any any hybrid system or electric system on the road. 
uh, less than 500 pounds today in many cases, so it's an extremely effective way to do uh, uh, hybrid systems, and that's why we've gotten the traction we've had in heavy-duty uh, trucks and platforms. So I think we're, uh, uh, we've got a little bit more, a little bit about effectiveness, uh, fuel economy, uh, customers see up to 30% increases in fuel economy, CO2 down the same amount, it's linear with CO2, but NOx are much higher. Uh, we see about a 50% reduction in NOx, and those of you that are looking at some of the new uh, grant framework that's coming out around Volkswagen will understand that this NOx is monetizable, meaning uh, Volkswagen will give each of you uh, significant grants because of the way we're able to show our NOx emission reduction. It's not linear with fuel. Many people ask the question, why 30% on fuel and 50% on NOx? And the reason why is NOx are created during acceleration and deceleration events. And that's where our hybrid system is doing all the work. So uh, very effective uh, use, again, of, of energy and technology. And, and we'll go to the next slide. So we look at four major markets for these. Obviously, rest trucks down on the bottom left. Heavy delivery, um, that obviously includes many of the, the government delivery uh, products that are out. Transit buses, obvious, and off-road as well. Um, so again, our product, this hybrid product works in all of these as does all of our analytics products. Um, one to note, in all of these four uh, sectors, um, we're, we shoot for a two to three year payback period, a two to three year ROI. Um, we achieve that in, in most cases during these cycles. So it's the, the beauty of having a very cost effective product, a very weight effective product, and, and a product that from an efficiency standpoint has uh, very nice returns. Next slide. Um, the, if I can figure out what's going on here, uh, the, today we have 200 systems on the road, uh, ranging from National Renewable Energy Lab to Morgan Olson, who uh, is an upfitter that installs our system and also has some mules. Um, obviously, some uh, some you'll see again in, in uh, um, the, the Northeast uh, North Shore University Health System in Chicago. Uh, it's running our systems across the U.S. Uh, International Limousines running it uh, on George Washington's campus. Uh, Kaiser Permanente is running them in California. Uh, Canadian Lennon's running them in Canada. Uh, and then we also have uh, uh, partners that are running the product in uh, Europe, across Europe and the United Kingdom. Also, we have product uh, today running in India, um, as well as, as Mexico and South America. Uh, today, we work with uh, very large customers, and uh, so you see, again, some of these platforms here. In the middle of the screen, you see some European platforms. But again, one of our unique aspects is we're on very large trucks, so you can see the Navistar down there is a 36,000-pound uh, uh, truck. Uh, the trade team vehicle is in the UK. That's also a 36,000-pound or 18-ton truck, all the way down to smaller, smaller trucks like E450 and then a Sprinter there on the bottom left. Next slide. Our fleet, uh, again, a variety of, of buses, ranging from India bus platforms all the way to a more traditional rear engine bus platform. Uh, we do have the two buses in the middle are Denali National Park, so they're a bit unique. One of the other aspects we do well is we service very cold climates and very hot climates, so we have products uh, today in uh, New Delhi, India, with 120, 130 degree Fahrenheit, and we have products in, in Denali, Alaska, with minus 50 degree Fahrenheit. So um, it's been one of the beauties of not having chemistry batteries, but rather having mechanical batteries in, in this hydraulic, in that we can support uh, much, much higher temperature extremes for a longer period of time. Uh, So a little bit on emissions improvements, I'll just spend a second, it's an eye chart, but know that we've got spent a lot of time with third party proving our emissions uh, validation as well as our efficiency validation um, for both CO2 and NOx. Um, we use both uh, third party uh, testing labs in Colorado as well as in uh, New York. Um, we also use third party testing labs in India. Next slide. Uh, so again, one of the things we talk a lot about, and I think of the uh, uh, customers that are on the, the, the line, um, obviously ROI is a big deal and we've worked to get the cost down and the efficiency and effectiveness up on our product. And with that now, we believe we have a very compelling ROI for the system and we're excited about where we are today on that. But we know customers also buy our product because they have health and sustainability goals. 
they have uh, regulatory incentives or goals, and they also have grants and incentives. Obviously, with the new $3 billion Volkswagen settlement funds, we believe that's going to be a material uh, um, motivator for many people around our product. We are uh, have done a lot of work to make sure that we're recognized by each of the states for those those grant opportunities, and that our our NOx reduction and mitigation is also recognized. So we're excited for that to come along, and we think it'll it'll certainly uh, increase the market share and, and the viability of many many products, including ours, as we go forward. Next slide. Really the, the end of what we cover. I didn't cover any of our other products, but certainly uh, you'll see from our website we're working on both an electric hybrid or a non-hybrid, a full electric uh, E450 product um, that we'll have uh, out in the next uh, two years. We're also working on a variety of other software efficiency and hardware efficiency, including things like uh, refrigeration, replace, refrigeration uh, compressor replacements and other things that improve efficiency for fleet uh, customers and improve emissions for fleet customers, all with a very effective ROI um, and all that also qualify for the grant programming. So thank you, Megan. Thank you, uh, audience, for the opportunity to talk. Um, certainly, again, you can see my email at the bottom of the screen. Feel free to email me and, uh, uh, and or uh, from our website. You can certainly see the, the uh, contact us from there as well. So thank you for the time today, Megan. Great, thanks so much, Tim. All right, I'll switch over to David uh, to talk about XL hybrids and uh, the opportunities there. Hey, Megan. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, everyone, for uh, taking a few minutes today to uh, learn more a little about the, uh, the work and products that uh, MAC, MAC has gathered for us. Uh, and you and, and your fellow communities. Um, Excel Hybrids uh, is actually based in Boston. Uh, our corporate headquarters are in the uh, Brighton neighborhood right off the Charles River. Um, and uh, we've been around since about 2009. I'll give you a quick summary of our products. And uh, as always, um, being so close, you know, if anybody has any additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Or if you're interested in seeing one of our vehicles in person, uh, we can either bring one by, or you're obviously welcome to stop by the shop. A little bit about XL. Uh, we are not a vehicle OEM. We are not trying to make vehicles or, or redo something different than what the OEM vehicle had intended. Uh, Ford and Chevrolet have been making vehicles for 100 plus years and uh, want to come along and do it better than they are today. So, uh, what we need to do is complement what they've already done uh, with efficiency goals with our hybrid and plug in hybrid systems. Uh, we offer systems for Ford, GM, and Isuzu. And uh, we can leverage both products depending on this customer base uh, and vehicle type. Uh, products are designed uh, with no compromises to fleet operations. We need you to be able to deploy our systems and how you do your day-to-day -day job. Uh, I mean, the reason any of us have fleet vehicles is to accomplish a task, and we don't want you to have to change or adjust that task to uh, accommodate uh, clean technologies. Uh, as a shuttle bus, you don't have to remove seats or get any cargo space or anything like that. Uh, I hope we're an industry trusted partner. You can see back on some of the major uh, Fortune 100 and uh, 400 customers that we deal with. Uh, we have over 45 million customer miles right now on the road uh, with current vehicles deployed. And we'll link on the website and you can see a live update of uh, uh, customer action. Just a quick example of uh, one of our systems. Uh, this is our base hybrid system for the Ford Transit chassis. That's the uh, chassis you see there. Um, it's a very simple, clean design. Uh, it's lightweight, only weighs about 350 pounds, and three major components under the vehicle. Uh, OEM engine, transmission, gas tank, uh, fuel lines, brake lines, exhaust system, all remain in place. All hybrids always uses factory bolt holes when possible. We don't cut well to drill the vehicle. Uh, our system maintains a full OEM warranty once it's deployed. Uh, so the uh, middle of the vehicle is the uh, traction motor. A drive shaft actually can uh, pass through that uh, in the vehicle, and, and then sometimes on the side, depending on the uh, size of the vehicle, is the battery pack and the motor drive. Uh, in the vehicle is a small uh, telematics controller we call XL Link hybrid system module. I'll talk a little more about XL Link a little further along. But again, with most hybrid systems, when you accelerate, uh, we take the load off the factory engine with electrical torque. We get to 250 
foot pounds of electrical work to the vehicle. So uh, when you're accelerating, we can keep the engine RPMs low and help propel the vehicle. We step a brake, uh, we generate electricity, and because we're mounted right on the drive shaft, slow the vehicle down, and at the very still double your brake life. And with system, you can kind of see some of the vehicles that we have uh, there, uh, shuttle buses, uh, Ford Transit, Chevy vans, work trucks, box trucks, uh, strip chassis, F-59, uh, name a few. Detail about the vehicles uh, specifically. Uh, all the systems can be uh, speed limited as well. Um, most fleets stick between C5 and 85 miles an hour. Uh, it's two things. It's obviously a few things to the fleet, but uh, it also kind of mitigates the uh, top level of fuel. You know, once you start getting over 55, 65 miles an hour, your fuel economy really dives off a cliff. So uh, if it can help you uh, after that somewhat, then you know, we're happy to do so. A new product for us. So this came out, uh, it was announced in December. Uh, we're actually starting to uh, kind of start rolling these out uh, very shortly. Uh, it's been the largest pre-ordered products to date. Uh, first plug-in hybrid product and our first pickup truck. So we take uh, uh, the Ford F-150 that you would order, so you can option out uh, how you like. Um, you could do multiple cab and bed configurations. So if you're doing super cab or extended cab, uh, let or short bed, 4x4, four 4x2. Four, four uh, we pair with both 2.7 liter and the 3.3 liter engines that Ford's providing. Uh, both those engines have start-stop idle technology, so uh, the idea is to use their idle return technology with the hybrid system to, to provide the cleanest F-150 in the market. So uh, really a good solution for something that hasn't really been addressed in the marketplace. Uh, you know, any municipality, uh, town, city, or state, uh, they tend to have a lot of pickup trucks, so this is a large market. Uh, and hybrid system increases MPG about 50, uh, 25%. Uh, the pit truck, because the plug-in system uh, is about 50% uh, improvement in miles per gallon. Uh, you can see in the speed governor, uh, a little heavier because the uh, larger battery pack is about 700 pounds for the total system weight. Universal charging, so if you have Toyota Priuses or Chevy Volt or anything Nissan Leafs laying around, uh, you can see a universal charging adapter for the truck. Apple too, and you can kind of see the time frames there. Uh, and install time with most of our systems is less than a day, you know, 60 hours is, is an average. Um, outfit MSRP for the system is uh, 24.9 for one. Um, the underside of the pickup truck, uh, the factory engine, but I'll start at the top left. If that way you're standing at the hood looking backwards. So you get the transmission and our light motor down on the dry shaft. And then to the right is the uh, underneath the vehicle. Uh, you can see the motor is very well integrated into the vehicle without modifying any of the factory components. Um, and again, uh, we're the first vehicle uh, electric, electrified QVM product from Ford. Uh, what that does is it ensures uh, full ship through capabilities to all Ford transportation uh, and logistics program, as well as uh, factory warranty integrity. integrity. Uh, so if you purchased a vehicle from a Ford dealer, you can retrofit our system. Uh, or install it on a new vehicle, and you can maintain or keep that factory warranty, uh, which is something that's hard to replace. So a little bit with the uh, plug-in hybrid battery pack. Uh, because it is a much larger pack, it does sit in the front of the bed. Uh, the feedback from our fleets was to keep it kind of low and a little bit longer rather than the tall, uh, much like a CNG or propane pickup tank would be. Uh, so it's still mounted across over toolbox. You can use a tonneau cover or if you use a cap or bed skin, anything like that, you can still uh, work with it. And the, uh, all the components of the system, uh, the vast majority of the vehicle's components on that box, the battery pack, the inverter, onboard charger, uh, control modules, uh, and cooling systems, a uh, very neat integrated system. Uh, it mounts to the, the bed floors and factory holes and cables and components uh, wiring right out to the front of the bed. Very good installation, very factory look. Um, and the best part is you can drive, whether it's one of our vans or the truck, get in, start. Uh, it feels like a normal vehicle. Uh, there's nothing different about it. Um, so if you didn't drive this vehicle every day, you might not know a lot is going on. Uh, if you do drive the vehicle every day and you put the hybrid system in, you might notice a little better pickup and a better braking. Uh, a very noisy system. 
and obviously for the result, a very low cost way to deploy uh, clean technologies. A little bit of XL Link, uh, it's our, our wireless vehicle data connection. Uh, this is a proprietary system for XL Hybrid that's uh, manufactured in house as a full uh, web and uh, software design team. Uh, it provides operational metrics. Uh, all fleet managers get a web portal that can log into and get a, a quick dashboard of what their fleet is doing. Uh, we can additional further report for you at no charge to kind of really drill down if you're looking for sustainability figures or where the fuel's being used. We can break your fuel use into speed buckets and idle time and, and other things to help uh, mitigate uh, some of your goals. On the other side, it can offer service alerts. If any of the systems should have an issue, you can actually email our service team, and then we can diagnose that remotely. Uh, one of my favorite things about our systems, too, is if anything happened with our hybrid system, it could actually default to off, and the truck can finish its day, finish its route, same thing with the van, so there's no tow truck involved, so to speak. The electrode can actually just spin as a, uh, a bearing at that point if needed. Down the line, you know, XL Link will position us very well for predictive intelligence. You know, the smart charging capability, now that we're having plug-in hybrid systems where we could charge it at smart times where it makes sense for the grid, uh, as well as further down the road, there's a lot of talk of uh, vehicle-to-grid integration. If you have electric vehicles driving around, that's a potential of storage of electricity that could be actually put back into the grid during peak times. Um, could be a revenue stream depending on the size of the fleet. So um, it's a little further down the road, but again, really positions us well for the future. Uh, kind of the, the path of how Excel works. Um, you know, we work in conjunction with OEM, with our outfitters, and with the fleets. Kind of a three-pronged approach to, to allow a very clean, seamless transition. So I know from a fleet manager or a town manager perspective, it's very easy to deploy. Uh, they check the box that they want the system, and we take the rest from there. I uh, can work with the OEM and board dealer, or, or in this case, MEC, to order the vehicles, have it upfit on its way to you, uh, and then you get a turnkey ready to go hybrid system. Here's some of the upfitters. Um, this is a small portion of, uh, of all the potential places. I also do retrofits that aren't listed here. Um, I like and thought, auto truck, Adrian Steel, all the national. Uh, um, but then oftentimes some of these vehicles are having upfits done at these facilities, so having our system there, how are we going to stop anyways, uh, can often be very convenient. So value propositions, uh, starting at the top left, obviously sustainability is a big driver. That's why we're all on the phone today. Uh, financial, you know, we're the lowest cost hybrid product on the market, uh, the easiest to deploy. Uh, there's obviously uh, financial reductions and operating expenses, and it's not at a price point that requires large grants or uh, funding to deploy, uh, as some other technologies have in the past. Uh, fast inflation, if, again, major OEM purchase, so you can buy the truck and vans that you like, a backup camera or not, or whatever color you like. Uh, you can choose the vehicles you want. Uh, and then data, again, you don't have to deploy 10 of these and, you know, trust me, they work. You know, we can actually work with you to show uh, improvements in the uh, metrics that you're gaining from deploying our hybrid systems. And then we can kind of judge uh, the flight of uh, future vehicles based on that. The financial uh, roadmap, uh, obviously, fuel starting at the bottom going up, you know, fuel is a big part of the savings of a value proposition for green technologies. Uh, obviously, with regenerative braking, you're saving saving brake service life. Um, you know, there's some productivity savings, so uh, maybe not many of our municipal customers, but a lot of our national fleets like Coke and FedEx, uh, you know, the, the fewer times the vehicle has to fill up during the week, there's some time saved. That's less time that they're running into uh, they can store a Dunkin' Donuts or something like that. Uh, there is some kind of efficiency me metric there. Uh, the our additional torque, uh, as an example I showed you here, uh, on the Ford Transit, you can save, instead of buying the premium gasoline engine, you can buy the base engine. With our torque, you'll get the same performance. Uh, it could save almost $1,800 on an EcoBoost, as an example. So it's a, it's a nice way to save some money up front, starting off with a better MPG engine to begin with. So, again, and always trying to get the greenest outcome possible. And then it has their own value for PR and uh, stability and uh, goals that they're trying to do, whether it was a, a 
town or state level. Um, you know, there's some that are there. You know, we don't know what that number is. In study, um, at just the city of Boston, obviously, it's very relevant. Um, uh, they have a handful. I think they're probably a 28 or so vehicles. I think with us right now, um, but you can see uh, very, very performance. They have a variety of vehicle types. They have a few shuttle buses, passenger vans, uh, some animal control uh, cargo vans, uh, senior shuttle things like that. And then inside, you can see a lot of the different uh, uh, types that we work with. Um, and a lot of flexibility, very easy to, to deploy. And what's nice about the system, and because it goes on smaller vehicles, uh, you can add green vehicles into maybe parts of your fleet that you weren't able to in the past, whether it was a water department or a sewer department or, um, you, know, um, you know, transport vans we've done. Now we've even done CSI and ambulances. So um, a lot of flexibility with our hybrid system. All our systems uh, that I listed earlier, as far as application, these are in stock and ready to go. So uh, once you purchase the vehicle, we can easily align uh, installation uh, for either like during new vehicle purchase or if you've just recently taken them vehicles and you want to retrofit them, then we can find a uh, an upfitter that's close to you. For pricing, just so you have it, uh, again, these are all prices for one. Uh, we do offer discounts for volume purchases, um, and uh, I'll just start at the top. Uh, the Class 2 vans, you know, the Chevy Express, GMC, uh, Ford Transit has been very popular this year, uh, 10990 for upfit. Uh, class 3 to 6, this range, this is on the higher side, 19280 is a little larger vehicle. Some of the smaller shuttle buses uh, are less than that. And the uh, Ford F-150 plug-in hybrid upfit is uh, 4990 for one. And then if more OEM models, uh, both hybrid and plug-in hybrid, are already under development. And so uh, later this year, we'll have uh, another product announcement as well as next spring, uh, doing maybe some additional pickups or possibly super duty kind of level vehicles. A lot of requests from customers for those vehicle types. Not me, but uh, this, uh, I am not a doctor. I wish I was, but that's uh, uh, Ed Lovelace, our CTO, uh, Chief Technology Officer. He works very well with uh, over at MAPC and uh, helped did a lot of uh, heavy lifting for us to get us on uh, VH102 as well as some of our VM and other projects. So uh, his information is there. Uh, if anyone wants to email me, it's david at cellhybrids.com. Uh, easy email. I'd be happy to address any questions, and I think Megan was going to share my contact information as well. And I like that, Megan. Thank you. That was great. Um, I think we've run up against our time for the webinar. Um, what I'd like to pose is just do a lightning answer to one of the questions um, that we've got for the vendors, and then if folks on the line have additional questions for the vendors, you can either type them into the chat box quickly right now, um, and I'll circulate them to all the webinar attendees and answers um, after the webinar, or you can send questions directly to me and or to the vendors if there are specific questions, um, just to make sure that you get everything uh, cleared up if you had any questions that resulted from the presentation. So really, uh, one of the questions that came in uh, was, for municipalities who have maintenance staff, um, for each of your technologies, is there any type of training that's needed, um, and is there kind of associated time or cost that you could speak to with that maintenance? So quickly, like 30 seconds each. <laughs> um, this is Carly, you start. So there, there aren't any additional certifications, um, you know, just their, their up to automotive uh, certifications, uh, and no, we, we would work with them directly, but there aren't any additional certifications required. Great. Uh, Tim? So uh, we do provide, and in fact, uh, you can get an idea of what's out there on our uh, Vimeo uh, video side. We have uh, training videos for both uh, fleet managers as well as drivers. Um, so uh, again, it's, it's intended to be non-invasive. It doesn't require any changes dramatically, but we still find to optimize it and, and optimize everybody's use of the product, a little bit of training goes a long way. And so we, we have created video training for it. 
Um, we do provide after major installations, typically a uh, team will come and meet with both the drivers and the, the fleet managers to make sure everybody's comfortable. Uh, again, it's not required, but we find the, the uptake and the, the opportunity to get everybody on board and excited about it is a key aspect of any new technology integration and, and uh, take up. Um, and then finally, yes, we, we have a, the warranty covers the product uh, all the way through uh, five years, 60,000 miles with no change. And again, like Excel, you know, or all these cases, we don't change the manufacturer's warranty either. And we don't have any maintenance required during that warranty period either. So uh, all of that is taken care of. We do have both through our service personnel as well as we do have our own uh, channel service personnel who support all of our service garages in, in the Northeast. Um, we have somebody actually in the Boston area as uh, dealers and partners in throughout the Northeast that uh, provide any service and warranty that if it's needed. Um, and we can also train the fleets and, and manage the fleets through warranty if needed. So it is uh, very much painless. Um, it is uh, you know, arguably less painful than most of your OEM warrant relationships, and from a service standpoint, nothing new required. So uh, we've really worked to make it uh, seamless and, and uh, easy for the fleets. Thanks, Jim. Uh, David? Yeah, so generally speaking, uh, Excel Hybrid System is pretty maintenance-free. Uh, I always ask that you do uh, a visual inspection if the vehicle's in for any type of maintenance. Uh, general uh, maintenance beyond that can be done at any uh, for every dealer should you, uh, should you need it. Uh, we all include a 1-800 number, a toll-free number, and driver's side door. So when you open up the driver's side door, there's an 800 number right on the sticker. 24-7, uh, there's a hotline there that will actually deploy you to, uh, to any of our technicians that can uh, address any concerns. Uh, so even if you took one of our vehicles into a Jiffy Lube or something like that, and they had a question about the hybrid system, they could call the 800 number and have any questions answered quickly. Great. Uh, so again, if you have any questions that uh, we didn't get to or the presentations didn't answer, uh, please send those along to either myself or any one of the, the vendors uh, that spoke today. Um, shortly after this, I'll circulate both the slides along with a recording um, and some additional information about the group purchasing program specifically. Um, so if you're interested in joining, <clears throat> joining that round one, um, you can let us know. Um, and as possible. Uh, so thank you again, everyone, for uh, tuning in to our webinar, and thank you to all of our presenters to, uh, for providing all the great content. Um, great, and have a, have a good rest of the day. Thanks, Megan. Thank you, everyone.